Hi everyone, today I want to go over a Huntress build that is viable for your high challenge games. And, more importantly, it does not rely on any movement enhancing items, as many of you have requested in the comments. The basics of the build is to use camouflage armor with a blooming spirit bow. Hitting enemies with your bow will create the grass cover you need to break away and reposition again constantly keeping your distance and avoid melee damage. Camouflage armor gives you 3 plus level turns of invisibility every time you step on a grass tile. Another benefit of this strategy is you always sneak attack coming out of stealth. More guaranteed hits. The grass created doesn't have to be used for stealth either. It can be used as a single tile pillar to kite and lose enemies lines of sight. Let's take a look at some of the Huntress talents, because they synergize really well with this build. Rejuvenating Steps A tier 2 talent lets you revive grass that has been previously stepped on or even burned by fire. This will trigger invisibility as well, and has a short 5 turn cooldown at plus 2. Another tier 2 talent is Heightened Senses, which lets you see enemies with mind vision within 3 tiles. Effectively, this means you can hide behind the grass tiles and see the position and statuses of enemies on the other side. I'd also like to mention that both subclasses of Huntress also have pretty good talents to enhance the build. Sniper's Mark, with a bow augmented for speed, can give you enchantment activation over a volley of three separate arrows. Sniper also gets Shared Enchantment, which gives Thrown Weapons the ability to trigger Blooming as well, with 100% chance. On the other hand, Warden has the ability to see through grass, and gets the Barkskin Talent, which grants 0-150% to armor based on the current hero's level after stepping on grass. This can make you absorb quite a bit of melee damage, as if you were wearing proper armor even with the Faith is My Armor challenge enabled. The one item that can take this build to the next level is the Wand of Regrowth, creating instant patches of grass for camouflage, while simultaneously rooting the enemies in place. Did I also mention this strategy will get you a ton of seeds for alchemy and potions? Between blooming and the rejuvenating steps, you will be stepping on a lot of grass, and by the end of the game, you will have more than enough alchemy for beating Yogg. So we've talked a lot about pros, what are the cons of this strategy? The first con is flooded floors. They spawn water tiles everywhere, preventing blooming from creating grass. Ironically, this would be a favorable floor if you were using the flow enchantment, but here, water is a liability. The second con of the strategy is that it takes a lot more time. You have to set up patches of grass and rely on a bit of RNG at the start of each floor. This means you will use more turns getting the strategy to work and go through more food and torches. Hopefully offset by the amount of seeds and purity potions from all the grass. And finally the third con that I can think of is blooming and camouflage are both uncommon enchantments, so getting all the pieces is up to your luck. I would use Scrolls of Enchantment early on to try to get the Camouflage Armor first, as that can still take you very far with just the normal amount of grass spawning in the dungeons, buying you more time to get a Blooming Enchantment or a Wand of Regrowth later on. That's all I can think of in terms of analysis for this strategy at the moment. Technically you could do this build with other classes as well, but the Spirit Bow is critical because of the unlimited range it has letting you get more turns of triggering blooming before an enemy reaches you. A shorter ranged weapon like a blooming spear on the other hand would force you to camouflage after every hit and quickly use up all the grass in your vicinity. Maybe a rogue or a duelist with a dagger could make this build work as well, with their additional stealth abilities. Perhaps even a camouflage mage with staff imbued with the wand of living earth. So that's it for this video, hopefully it gave you some ideas to try out in your next run. I'll post an example of how this build can be used to beat the final boss in the next video.